Undercoating is a really powerful painting technique. It's kind of a tier three painting technique. It comes after you've just taken thick paint and slapped it right on the model, and after you learn how to take good advantage of a wet palette and thin and mix your paints properly. What's great about undercoating is you get to do a lot of the work of your model before you've actually started painting. And the model I'll be demonstrating on is the Lord Acolyte. I have equipped the power claws and samurai style shoulder pads. This model comes with another style of shoulder pad and weapon options. This Chaos Space Marine inspired mini is available to our patrons for the month of November, along with some Chaos inspired Dawn of War terrain, which is all hosted by Comics, Games, and Things. We also have Patreon only shows, live hobby hangouts, and merch. This model is made of two types of materials, armor and trim, and should be the prime candidate for undercoating. After it gets a coat of black primer, of course. The model is now prime black, the perfect start of any miniature, and now I can begin the undercoating process. And this process kind of has a lot of different names. Zenithal Highlight, Slap Chop. And I don't, just don't want to reiterate that you should do it, but I want to explain exactly why it works. First, you need your value colors of black and white. Breeze work well, although if you already own black and white, my favorites are Liquitex Heavy Body, Acrylic Titanium White, and Apple Barrel Black, there's no need to own any shades of gray, as you can already mix all 50 shades with just those two. I started off with a Zenithal Highlight, using a light gray. This can also be achieved with a dry brush, but for this mini, I want the nice smooth gradients that the airbrush will give me. This model might look really bright now, but it's actually still pretty dark. If I hold a white paper towel up, you can see just how dark this model still is. I put some white paint onto my palette so I can push my highlights all the way up to pure white, painting on top of the gray Zenithal. These are the spots that I want to catch the light. In the end, they will have full color saturation, the brightest spots on the model, and the Zenithal tells me where they should go. I put a lot of white in areas that ended up pure gray, and on parts of the model that are still black primer, I made some small edge highlights. In artsy fartsy circles, this is called value sketching, where you do simple shapes, lights, and darks to make sure that you know exactly what you want to do. And it's very useful to do this before you introduce color, because color introduces millions of different variables. Maybe you thought that purple and orange would go good together, but then you actually get that on the model and you're thinking, uh-oh. If you already have thought about, you've done all the work to think about which areas are gonna be light and which areas are gonna be dark, those things can help you make valuable color choices. Also, dry brush time. Paint brushing on white gave me some finesse to make some reflections and highlights, a little like I was painting true metallic metal. The dry brushing will create some easy edge highlights. I did this all over the sand and rocky base, on the claws and the wings. This takes a few seconds and saves me minutes of carefully painting these areas with a brush. Now the model is rendered in perfect black and white. And boom, the value sketch is all done. Now I can introduce color and the hard stuff has already been done. Trust me, the painting is gonna go very smoothly because I'm gonna be working off of this base. Now color selection is important. Dark colors are not a good choice for this step. Instead, bright saturated colors are what you want. Even if you want the model to end up with those darker colors, those are just the same bright colors with black paint in them. The benefits of bright colors is that they will display their true brightness over top of the white highlights and darken over the black primer. Also, contrast and speed paint are a good tool for this, but I would suggest not jumping straight to those technical paints and to see what you can achieve with normal acrylics. I put some bright yellow and magenta down on my palette. Then I took a brush with plenty of water and thinned them down a lot. Water works just fine, but sometimes a little paint medium is a nice tool. I really like Josonja Magic Mix for thinning down paint. It does a really good job of suspending the pigments really evenly, so you still get really nice brush control. And it slows the drawing time down just a little bit. Although if you use tons of this stuff, your paint will get a little bit glossy. If that's a concern, good old acrylic matte medium works great. I really like Liquitex Professional. I put this very watery paint down in the model, and this tints what's underneath, and tinting is key. If you put on thick paint, it'll completely hide the undercoat and waste it. The thin paint will show up brighter and more saturated over the gray and white, and get very dark over the black, and this usually takes a coat or two. Also, watery paint can start to pool up. If that happens, you need to add more paint or mix in some paint medium. With the magenta done, it was yellow's turn. I applied this the same as the magenta, and one thing that acrylics do better here than contrast or speed paint is it doesn't fill in the cracks like a wash does. It might look like it's doing that while it's wet, but once it dries, it's just a light tint. And why not have some fun? I splashed some blue onto the claws so they stand out proudly against the rest of the model. I'm just following whatever my undercoat told me to do. If there was a spot that I worked up to pure white, I give it maybe one or two coats to make sure that that spot has full color saturation, and then I'm done. It's pretty much a Warhammer coloring book. The undercoat is my blueprint to tell me exactly where the paint should go and what it should do on the model. Instead of making big decisions all the time, the values are all laid out and all I have to worry about is layering the colors on top of it. If I do it right, I shouldn't have to paint anything more than once. I've been applying colors for less than an hour and I would say the model is done. I'd be perfectly happy to plunk this on the gaming table and have a nice vibrant model. But you know what? Let's, let's give it a little extra zhuzh by introducing some black shading and some white specular highlights. A wash paint would be good for this, but I want to keep it simple. Good old black paint thinned down. 
Looking for the black paint showing through for my undercoat, I put this paint only on those spots, lowering the color value on those areas to increase the overall contrast. The difference between black and white, which is what makes paint jobs look cool. And specular highlights are those little dots of white reflections on things. I put these in the brightest spots of color and use this sparingly. This isn't representing a real color on the model, but the light reflecting off the materials, and once again, pushing my contrast even further. With the model done, it was time for the base, and I'm all out of artsy fartsy ideas, so I slobbered some green and yellow speed paint over the base, in a gradient. Super easy, barely an inconvenience. With the white dry brushing, there is still tons of good grit showing through on the final result. This paint job was not a particularly time intensive or laborious one, but I think it turned out really nice. You'd be amazed at what you can do once you have undercoating under your belt. It's not the be all end all painting technique, it's not the one painting technique to rule them all, but it is very nice, especially for miniatures that you're not very familiar with. If you paint nothing but sci-fi but you wanna try out something fantasy, I think undercoating is a really good way to test things out. Because you're, you're planning ahead but you're boiling the process down into two decisions. Is this spot on the model in the light or is it in shadow? And so I challenge you, yes you, Rob, on your next miniature, try out undercoating. You can even follow along with this video because once again, this miniature, the Lord Acolyte, is available to our patrons over on Patreon. Thanks for watching.